Good evening. This is Attorney Vincent Davis, and this is The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and Win. Each week at this time, we're taking your calls, we're listening to your stories, and answering your questions. If you want to call in, you can call in at uh, 888 no. 800-222-5222. That's 800-222-5222. You can also catch us live at live streaming at Facebook Live at the page The Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and Win, or I think it's actually How to Fight CPS and Win on the Facebook page. Okay, um, I want to remind everyone that last week I announced that uh, my co-host, uh, Terry Greenstein has passed away, so please keep him and his family in your prayers. You know, we get um, a lot of calls, even during this pandemic uh, period in time, CPS is still taking away children. Um, some people say that they're kidnapping children, and in some cases, I find that to be, I find that to be true. So, if you have a problem, if something like this happens to you, the first thing that you need to do is you need to find out, you need to find an attorney that practices in this area. Please don't find a family law attorney because that's not the type of attorney you need. Please don't find a criminal attorney because that's not the attorney that you need. You need someone that's experienced in the CPS courtrooms you know, in the state of California or w whatever state you're in and talk to that person. Try to get a consultation. These cases are too important. We're talking about your kids. These cases are too important. You know, I was telling someone earlier today, these kids are placed in foster homes. I used to represent foster parents who were accused of child abuse. Um, I once represented a foster parent who caused the death of a foster child. So you need to take action right away. Don't let these children just be warehoused and languished in uh, these foster homes. Let's talk to Melvin from Desert Hot Springs. <coughs> Melvin. Hello. Hi, Melvin. Did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Kind of both, but I'm going to get kind of like straight to the point, but I'm a, a little bit about the story, right? So, uh, November of 2019, I found out that the care provider was physically abusing my child. The social worker said that they opened up a case within CPS. Not one person took the kids to be examined by a doctor. So I took the kids to the hospital. My three-year-old admitted to a sheriff and a doctor that they were being beat with a flip-flop. We had two court hearings since then. I've asked the lawyers, I've asked the social workers to uh, um, bring those documents into the court so that we can get our children back. It's been 13 months, but they refuse to bring these documents against the care providers into the courtroom. I've jumped through every single hoop that they've asked me to. 13 months, I'm just getting unsupervised visitation. My reunification services are going to be over in July. Thank God that the judge extended it to July because CPS really suggested that they take the kids into foster care at our last hearing last month. What do I do? I'm doing everything humanly possible to show the courts that I'm a good parent. I have a beautiful home. Well, I had stable income until COVID-19, but right. so now I, I still have a stable home, good transportation. Um, I will, I still, I still can provide for my children just, Okay. I just don't have the same income I did a well, month let, ago. Let me answer but, that. Let me answer the question okay. for you, and I hope you have yeah. a pen and a piece of paper. Okay. Number one, you're going to have to sit down and talk to your attorney. I did that. The attorney, the attorney refuses to help me do anything that goes against CPS, and of course, I got a, a court-appointed attorney. Okay. Um, 
Has the attorney actually told you that they refused? Literally to my literally to my face. I am not going to um, subpoena the documents from the hospital for the hearing. Her exact words. Did she say why? She said that I should be happy with the decision that the the, the, um, the judge has has rendered, basically. And what decision is that? Well, the last decision was to give me and the mother until July to prove to the courts that the children should come back home. Well, do you, did you say you're having unsupervised visits now? I just started unsupervised visits last week. So I was getting three supervised visits. So, you know, if I go into my whole story, it's just way too long. But I was getting three supervised visits a week up until the point that this abuse happened. And when I took my kids to the hospital, the social worker who has now been removed from my case, she told me the reason that I'm not getting my visits like I was before was because that the supervisors of my visit was a conflict of interest. They allowed me to take the kids to the hospital to get examined. Okay, so here, because I can tell your story is a little bit more complicated, I want you to write this telephone number down, and you can call it, you can actually call it tomorrow afternoon. There'll be a receptionist on duty, and since, you know, COVID uh, is the way of life now, I'll be at my home probably sitting on my couch watching television. So if you call into the office, and, you know, everyone's working from home, but if you call into the office, they'll, they'll try to connect you with me and tell them, hey, I spoke to Vince last night. He wanted to talk to me. Call 888 because I can help you get your children back. And I also wanted to tell you, you and your children probably have a civil rights lawsuit against the county of Riverside and uh, the social workers. I'm 100% positive of that. I don't know nothing about the law. Right. Okay, so look, Melvin, I look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. Thank you very much, Vince. Thank you. Okay, let's take another quick call before the next break. Let's talk to Kelly in Glendale. Kelly, did you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Uh, I had a story to tell and a question to ask. Go for it. I think you're very uh, familiar with my case. Can you hear me? Yes, I, I can. Okay, um, I actually had one of your lawyers, uh, uh, Stephen Sargent, work on my case. And, uh, for the most part, you hold know, on a second, people. Kelly. Stephen Sargent yep. isn't a CPS lawyer; he's a family law lawyer. Okay. Do you have a CP? Do you do you have a CPS case? Yeah. This this is a problem right here. It is a CPS case at this point. On October third, uh, two thousand nineteen, you know the case that uh, he was working on with my daughter, my stepdaughter attacking me, and me getting a restraining order on her, a move out order, a no contact order for a year on her. Um, when we finally um. My my uh, ex my soon to be ex wife um, when I fi- I filed divorce she and Spite sat back here and put a case into the Orange County uh, decimal violence against me so we were Wait. my criminal lawyer allowed us for battling um, to take care of the case uh, with my stepdaughter because the police had arrested me so um, while I sat back and was uh, using a uh, public a uh, public attorney. They uh, convinced me that you know if I go down to um, military diversion because I'm a former vet and they're living they're, they were living in my vet uh, my VA housing um, <clears throat> that I would be able to still do the same thing I'm doing at the VA you know as far as being a contract uh, work study contract specialist and it, everything would be okay it wouldn't be a DV case so I went down there to military diversion they tried time after time to sit back and make it to a TV case. I even wrote a letter to the judge and that public defender buffered the letter and the the letter explained to her like how before I sat back and put a restraining order against my stepdaughter that my my, uh, soon be ex-wife would still allow me to see my daughter and everything was going right until like one day I tried to bring my daughter home and my stepdaughter wasn't there and I was was Wait a minute, Kelly, Kelly I gotta interrupt you you're telling me about a family law case and about okay. a criminal case. Yep. You're not telling me about a CPS case, and this is a CPS show. Okay. So, so here's a, here's a, hold, hold on a second. Problem. Hold on a second. Do, and I won't get do, do you have a CPS case right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what and county? I, what county is it Orange in? Orange County. Orange okay. County. And it, do you have a public defender representing you? 
No, I don't have anyone representing me. And see, there's just a thing. Okay, I'm Kelly, that's impossible. That's impossible, Kelly. Well, Whenever you have an open CPS case in the state of California, as in most states, they appoint you a free attorney if you can't afford to hire one. So you have to have, if there is an open case in the courtroom in Orange County, you have to have a um, court-appointed attorney. Now, you're telling me you don't? So this will happen, all right? I sat back here and... But we're having supervised visit at ACM um, and, and, and Santa Ana. I wound up suing them because one of the uh, monitors pulled on my daughter's arm. I wound up putting two welfare checks because one time my daughter showed up with a scar on her head and was covered with makeup. And I, it took my thumb like four times to remove the makeup. The second time was in May 4th where she showed up with a black eye. And they had, like, coached my daughter not to say that she had a black eye. So on the first welfare check, I got the, that from the police officer. The second one, they told me it was going to the juvenile court. So I had to put in the paperwork to see it, and I waited for 12 weeks. But by the time we had the case uh, in um, Orange County with uh, Judge Gaffney, he, he uh, had a trial with, with us on, on just the domestic violence. And I froze up. I admit, I suffer from anxieties. She had some lady in the back who was a public defendant. She was going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, to everything I was trying to testify to. And I got to the point where I couldn't say anything else, and I told Judge Jeffy, I had nothing really have to say. I couldn't even tell her all, repeat all the lies that she was saying. So, the, the, so this is what they did. The juvenile court thing did not come to the court yet, but I got, after this was done, after he gave me um, 52 weeks of uh, DIP, and also told me I couldn't see my kids for three years. They sent me a letter saying that I could not see the paperwork from the juvenile court. So I was like, what? I was like, after you see this lot of noise, so what's going on now is my criminal lawyer got it to the point that the judges see it and to render me to a mental health diversion because of my anxiety. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I said I would be taking... Uh, I, I've already been to the VA. I have been through so many um, um, uh, therapy with my pain therapy, with my nerve nerve damage, also through mindfulness. I've also been to a 52-week parenting uh, program and another parenting program, a parenting strengthening, you know, that was eight weeks. You know, I've been through all this because I knew ahead of time, all this was volunteer before even the BIP case came on October 3rd. Uh, hey, third, Kelly, Kelly, I have to interrupt but, you. Because we're getting ready to take our second break. Did you have a quick question you wanted to ask me? Yeah, the question was, how do I sit back here and get to see those papers from the juvenile court? Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, Kelly. Kelly, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You file what's called an 827 petition. You can get a copy of a blank 827 petition by just Googling it. Google 827 Petition Juvenile Court. The form will come out. I would suggest that you and your criminal attorney fill that out together because if you don't fill it out the right way, it might be denied and you may not get another chance. Kelly, I want to thank you for calling in. I want to thank you for listening. This has been The Secret. How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. We'll be back right after these messages. And when. Let's go back and let's take another call. Let's talk to Ashley from Lodi. Ashley, did Hi. you have a story to tell or a question to ask? Um, I had called a couple of weeks ago and uh, asked you a, co- a couple questions. I'm from San Joaquin County. Um, yes, they pushed out our trial. It was supposed to be March 30th, and then they changed it to, like, April 20th or something. Um is there like a loophole because the trial has to be within a certain amount of days or yeah. um, that is normally it because of this COVID thing or yeah, normally it, because I have two trials that are pending in San Joaquin County and the April 20th date is the date the judge set for everyone to come back and set new dates for the trials. As you might imagine, there's going to be a lot of backup because of the COVID uh, thing going on. I don't think the court will even be open on April 20th. I think they might try to do a a big phone conference with all of the attorneys to set new dates. 
the way that this COVID thing is developing from watching the news is apparently um, the chief judge and the governor um, with the governor's authority has closed down all courtrooms except for emergency hearings. They're not deeming trials as emergency hearings at this point in time. So, for example, I'm supposed to be in Riverside County. They just took uh, one of my client's children away, and they're going to have the hearing on Monday. But that's deemed an emergency hearing. When he gets his next hearing, who knows? It's supposed to be within a certain time period, but because of this pandemic, um, they have suspended all of the laws. There are a group of attorneys in California who are getting together to complain so that they come, can come up with alternatives so that they can do these trials and not wait and wait and wait. Because I read something today, um, you know, some people are saying it will be until July or August until we get this thing under control. So I'm sure that these cases can't wait till then. Um, you're not the only one in this position. That's not a good excuse, but, you know, we are in the middle of a pandemic. This entire time, like, our visits are taken away um, because of it. So I'm not able to see my children. I'm allowed to FaceTime my mm-hmm. my two older children because they're with their grandparents. But I have a almost two-year-old and a newborn, and um, I can't see them. Uh, and I kind of understand uh, to a certain extent, but I'm the offending parent. And um, it had to do with me testing positive for something in the hospital. And um, the intake investigator came immediately to our house. And the two, I live with my ex in the front of the house and my boyfriend in the back. And he had a court order to take all the kids based on, I was the offending parent. And he said that he thinks that the fathers are using drugs and the house is messy. And Well, hey, do this. You know, the best thing I can tell you, um, is take this time and do your testing and make sure that when you go back to court, you have a lot of clean tests under your belt. Then the judge will be hard-pressed not to give you your children back. Does that make sense? Yeah, we're, we're on Suboxone. I'm doing my counseling over the phone. My parenting classes have been suspended, but I'm, I'm trying to get evaluated through, like, CDCC myself instead of waiting for the judge to send me to drug court right. because that hasn't... And I know my my younger children are highly adoptable, and I know the judge said before that you're given like a six month period, and then they get adopted out. So are, are there scared. any family? Are there any relatives or family friends that could take the children? Um, not the two youngest children. Uh, no, we they don't we the, we don't talk to the paternal like uh, or maternal like um, the family friends. The family, friends, or the relatives can live anywhere in the world. They don't just have to be in San Joaquin County, right? Okay, they can be in Florida, so, New York. I don't know if you want to go to New York right now, but they can be in Florida. They can be in, you know, Las Vegas and Wyoming. They could be in another country even. Okay, because uh, the foster mom, she is like a family friend, I guess, of my boyfriend's sister, but she's already a foster mom, and I think she has expressed her interest in adopting them if we were right, right. to not do what we're supposed to do, Ashley, but I don't plan on... Ashley, sorry. text me at that number that I gave you yesterday, uh, just a few moments ago, and we'll okay. talk tomorrow more in depth, okay? I want to thank okay. you for calling in and thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh-huh. Let's talk to Mark from Huntington Beach right now. Hey, Hello. Mark, did you have a story to hey, tell or a question to ask? Well, uh, mine's kind of a good story. <laughs> I... Uh, it's a little different than most. I, I I came out smelling like a rose, but I went through this um, 10, 15 years ago. And uh, my daughter, I, I, had, I met a woman, right? And, uh, we, you know, we carried on and we had sex and all that. We had a kid. And I didn't know we were going to have a kid. All of a sudden, she shows up at my door after we broke up and says, hey, I'm pregnant. So she comes in the door. I say, well, I'm not going to let somebody else raise a kid of mine, you know? So I said, come in, I'll take care of you and the rest of that. And so I had this whole thing going on with her. We had a, a life going on and uh, she uh, ended up getting into the uh, meth, meth and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. it kind of messed up our whole life, you could say. And, and uh, But you had a that, CPS case that was opened? I did have one. I had the whole deal. But I went to uh, uh, the court 
because I didn't have no money, you know. So it was like I was working my butt off, but I still didn't have the money to pay a lawyer. So I did it myself, and I did the I can deal. It was called the I can out of the uh, court system, which was cool. It says you can do it yourself type thing, you know, file this, file that. What, count, what county were you in? I was in Orange County. They don't I do that in Orange in. County anymore. No, they don't do that no more. I was right. in Huntington Beach. But uh, they did that, and I thought, well, this is great, you know, but I, it wasn't great. All I was thinking was, uh, you know, everything's coming down on me here. They took my kid, you know. Right. But she, she did. She kind of went – she got into the drugs, and she went into rehab, basically, met a guy in rehab, took off with him, and all of a sudden my kid was gone one day. And I said, what the heck? And she said, well – and then I had to try to get my child back, which was crazy because, you know, that's your child. Right. right? And you know, this is my dialogue, and she just took away with her, and it's like you're there left with nothing, you know? It's like you're left with nothing. Is your child so, with you now? Um, she is 25 years old oh, okay. on her own, living in Morro Bay and doing great, and uh, even the mother has uh, got off the meth and everything, and she's doing fine on her own, but it, it, it turned out okay. You know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Great. Whew. What you a know, great story. That's all I can say. And, that, that, and you know, it, you just got to watch what you're getting into. And don't be so careless about having sex all the time because that really changed my whole life. I was going to be a surfer and going to sing and do all these things. And, wham, that knocked me right off my feet having a kid. And then all of a sudden this stuff hit me on the side saying it's not going to be yours because someone else is going to raise it because she's taking off with him. And I said, wait, whoa, whoa, hey, wait. Hey, minute. Mark, hold on a second. You were a surfer in Huntington Beach? Yes. Have you ever, heard of, the, have you ever heard of the name Robert Pace? That sounds familiar. Bob it's Pace. last name. P-A-C-E. Double. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know Bob. He's a very I famous. He's a very famous surfer, or used to be, from Huntington Beach. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I know a lot of surfers. Uh, I'm with the the crew there. I know a lot of them, like uh, all your uh, August, Robert August, and all them cool guys, and you know all the pros. And I get to chum with them. I get to work for them. I'm not good like them, but I'm I get to chum with them. Well, right. Very good. Hey, Mark, <laughs> thank you for calling, and I really appreciate it. And thank yeah. you for listening to the station. Keep listening. Uh, we're going to yeah, take man. our next break now. This is the, uh, the Secret, How to Fight Child Protective Services and When. We'll be right back. Vince Davis, I'm back. This is The Secret, How to Fight CPS and When. Let's take another call. Uh, Sean from Los Angeles. Sean, qu- story to tell or question to ask? I have a question to ask and really like a story too, but uh, my seven-year-old daughter was just taken from me yesterday. Oh, no. Now, I've been, I've been going back and forth with something that was said in January on the 31st with my daughter talking to a therapist that come and get her from her um, school out of her class on Fridays, saying that I hit her in the eye. Now, the incident that happened with her eye, she told me my grandson threw some dirt out in it. It looked like the pink eye. And so I kept her on for a few days, and... I sent her back to with a doctor's office. I don't know why she got into the the into the M um, with the therapist and said that. So I had the police at my door. Come back home on a Friday night. <laughs> they look at her. They leave their card and you know whoever they're talking to on the phone, making sure that they can leave or whatever. They're like you know they leave the card saying that the child is not in no danger. Don't seem like she don't want to be in the home. So that passed and so. The social worker get in contact with me. Mind you, I'm just having my kids back for a year now, so I know better than to do anything. And so I'm telling the social worker, like, what is going on, you know? And so I finally buckled down and let her come over and everything, which I didn't want to do because I knew it was going to be once they're out, if they're adamant about taking your kids, Mm -hmm. you know, they could just get in your house and say anything. Right. So... I think she had got mad because I requested for African American, um, you know, people. I just was just frustrated and angry. Like I don't want to go through this again. And I wish, you know. So I just just was trying to let her do everything so she could close out the case and be, before it comes to this. Oh, I 
I think we lost Sean on line one. Maybe a drop call. So let's go to Tabby in Missouri, the state, great state of Missouri. Tabby, this is Attorney Vince Davis. Did you have a sto- story to tell or a question to ask? Um, a little bit of both. Um, so our kids were taken um, back in the end of January. Mm-hmm. Um, there's four of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, uh, it started out with accusations against my oldest, um, a boy who's 13. And then it came to accusations against their father, my husband. And now they've they dropped that, and then they changed it again to accusations again against the father. Um, the The children have been moved from family care into foster care, um, and then... Now my son has been repeatedly moved, bounced around from foster home to foster home, and they're actually thinking about placing him in foster care outside of the state. They're refusing to even consider placing him in family care outside of the state because they don't want to do that. Um, They institutionalized my five-year-old because they said that she was violent to the point where the foster mother had to lock herself in a room to protect herself from my five-year-old. Um, the baby, they are trying to say we were neglecting the baby, and that is why when they first got into foster care, the baby would not have anything to do with the foster parents. They've, We've got a lot of character witnesses, like um, friends and family and stuff like that, that have been able to come through. They've got no proof, but... They've withheld custody, I I mean, all visitation for over 30 days and then got another two weeks granted by the judge. And we're just, we're at a loss as to what to do. We actually went out and hired a lawyer Mm -hmm. to try to get somewhere. And it, he thought when we went into the first real hearing Mm -hmm. that we would be able to get the girls back because they did a CAC interview and it, the, my oldest girl didn't disclose anything, but my five-year-old disclosed just what they led her into. And he said that they badgered her and they led her. And so he thought that we'd be able to get the girls to come home. But that day he walked into the courtroom and they said that there's new developments. And so therefore the kids have to stay out longer and we have no hope of getting them back. And we're not even going to have a hearing until at least July. Is that because of the pandemic? Um, It's a combination of the pandemic and giving them time to investigate um, to see about these new developments. you uh, You know what? In most states, I'm licensed in California. I'm not licensed in your state. But in most states, you know, the laws are very similar and there's strict timelines which they have to um, abide by. That's why I ask you, was the July hearing going to, because of the pandemic? If it really wasn't because of the p- pandemic, um, maybe you and your lawyer should talk, come up with a strategy that may you may want to press uh, CPS into going to trial as soon as possible. And if your child was a, had a CACI interview, you know, you might want to get a video or audio of that tape, listen to it with your um, attorney and see if anything was improper, like they were leading or, or something like that. I can also suggest that you might want to talk to an expert, um, like a retired social worker or a psychologist, about how you question a child, because young children can be led very easily down the path. Mm-hmm. Um, I can remember when my kids were eight and nine, um, just to show me, you know, how easily they could be led. My wife uh, uh, got them to say, you know, crazy things. And it was kind of a joke, but it wasn't funny, you know, because I was the butt of the joke. But, you know, young kids can be led very easily. So that's something that you and your attorney should sit down and strategize about. Okay. 
you know, I, I, I don't know your attorney, of course, you haven't said his name, and I don't want you to say his or her name. But you, not, you need to make sure that this attorney is experienced in CPS cases. I think I said earlier at the top of the show, don't get a family law divorce attorney. Don't get a criminal attorney. Get a, a man or a woman who's, who's an expert or specializes in these types of cases in your county and in your state. That's very, very important, Tabby. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for calling and thank you for listening from Missouri. All right. Uh, I think we have time for one more call. Oh, oh, Sean is calling back. Sean? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. My question was because the police just lied at my door. They said they got a 911 call. And um, when they got me to open my door, then the social workers come walking up. But they said... Um, they didn't have any mask on, and they, it's like they don't have to follow the rules. I'm in the house minding my own business, dripping wet with a towel at the door, telling them, like, no, nobody called the police. I'm just, I just hopped out the shower. It's just me and my seven-year-old here, and she don't have access to the phone. Like, I'm just really believing them, and they're, like, just wanting me to pop the lock open so they can get in and put his, put his foot right there and then tell me i got to wait for a sergeant. But Wait, hold on. Did they have a warrant when they came to your house? They had a warrant, but it was from, it, yeah, it does have the application and declaration. But I'm saying. What does it say about why they're she, trying to take your child? They say that she's in danger. Oh, from the um, alleged physical abuse. Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm telling them, I even talked to the supervisor. I'm like, this is just, I'm being picked at. I'm like an easy catch because I just had a case. Mm-hmm. Like, I know not to, you know, be doing anything wrong. I'm in the house, my my own business. I take care of my business, so I won't have to go through this. Sean, and does your like, does your child have the propensity for exaggerating or making up stories? Yes, and they know this. And because I don't want to put her on medication, it's like I'm neglecting and abusing her, or I don't want her to talk to all these counselors and therapists coming to my home and taking her to see that therapist. I'm just being wrong. I'm just trying to deal with everything. Well, wait a minute, myself. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do you think that your child needs medication? Has somebody determined? That's what they're saying. I don't think it. They're 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 diagnosing her as hyperactive. Uh, um, Who's there? Whatever. Who's they? The social worker, the therapist, and that's why I, I cancel it. I'm like, you guys are trying to put my baby on medication, and huh. so that's why I think you know it's like she just steady constantly question my baby in the interview and, and talking just so she can, I know, make herself relevant or stay on my case, trying to save my baby, you know. In all the reports, they're showing how my daughter's story changes, and she's, okay. she's all over the place touching stuff, and they have to grab her stuff out of her briefcase. Okay, Sean, you know, Sean, do this, because we're running out of time here, but you are going to have to talk to your attorney. If you can't afford one, what day? I don't even have a court date. And then the social worker is telling me I might have to be on the phone with the judge. I'm like, why would you put my baby out when you know everything shut down? And I and it, it it's hard to fight. It's hard okay, to Sean, fight everything, I Sean, can't even go. Yeah. My engineer's signaling me. Write this telephone number down. Triple eight triple eight six five eight two. Okay. Call that number tomorrow after 12 noon and tell them, hey, I spoke to Vince last night on the radio show. He said to connect me with him when you call in. Okay. And I really need to take action with the police. They don't follow the rules. They think they feel like they can do anything. Okay, Sean. We'll talk about that tomorrow, okay? Thank you for calling in and listening. This has been The Secret how to fight child protective services and when we're going to see you next week on the radio Saturday, 8 p.m. Pacific on KABC talk radio.